Hey guys, it's Tracy from the Decorating Room here at Wilton. Today I'm going to show you how to cover a cookie with thin royal icing or how to flood a cookie with icing, which are basically the same thing. Now we want a cookie with crisp outlines and icing that dries to a smooth, hard finish. And this tutorial uses our cookie icing recipe, which is our thin down royal icing. Now make sure to check out that video first where I will walk you through making a medium consistency for outlining and a thin consistency for flooding a cookie. Now this is essential because we will be using the outline in the flood method, which is very beginner friendly. Now piping an outline will create a dam to hold the thin icing in place, which will prevent your icing from running down the sides of your cookie. Decorated cookies look so impressive, and it might look a little intimidating for beginners. The thing is, it's actually very easy once you learn the right techniques. I'm going to give you the best tips from the decorating room so that you can start decorating cookies like a pro. Now before we decorate, I want to show you a quick tip for filling a bag with thin consistency icing. Now with medium consistency, you can use the same method as you always do for filling with icing, but for thin, you can do one of two things. You can fill the bag and snip off the tip with scissors right before flooding, and that's actually what I would suggest for most decorators. Or if you like working with a tip, maybe you have some really small sections to fill out and you want to be more precise, then I would suggest using a coupler. Now, even if you don't plan to switch out the tip, because this will make sure your tip stays in place and it doesn't go back into the bag. If you are using a tip, we recommend using a glass. Slide the bag in and position the tip so that it's facing upwards and then fill the bag. Now that should prevent the icing from coming out. Now for either method, I like to use bag ties so that the icing doesn't ooze out the back or crust on the top edges of the decorating bag. We're ready to start decorating cookies, so let's begin by making some outlines. I'm using a tip three with medium consistency icing. I'm going to touch the tip to the surface, squeeze and lift my bag. I keep squeezing and let the icing drop. You're just guiding the placement of the icing. This will really help create straight lines. Think of lifting and placing rather than trying to draw the line. You can stop in between if you need to take a break or turn the cookie. Just pick a natural place to do it. Now for example, I would avoid stopping in the middle of the line. I would stop at the corner instead and pick it up from there. Now it's the same technique for curved shapes or rounded shapes like we have in this heart cookie. Touch down, squeeze, and lift slightly. Now make sure to keep an even pressure as you follow the contours of your shape so that you have an even thickness on your line. Now even as a professional decorator, I can tell you that outlining round shapes can be challenging. And if you find that you have a lot of stopping points or your circle looks crooked, let me show you our secret weapon, a small damp decorator brush. Now after piping, let the outline crust just a bit. I take my damp brush and I can either lightly smooth over the bumps or push the outline of the crooked sections and correct my shape. Now that my outlines are done and almost fully dry, I can start flooding the surface with thinned royal icing to cover my cookie. Now typically, if we are decorating a batch of cookies in the decorating room, we'll outline all the cookies first, then go back and flood them all in. Now make sure that you're working on a level surface and think about where you're going to dry your cookies. If you plan to transfer these to a different part of the house, make sure you have a cookie sheet nearby to hold your finished cookies so that you can easily pick them up and move them later if you need to. For my project, there aren't any tiny details, so I'm not gonna be using a tip. I'm just gonna flood the entire surface. I'm gonna cut the tip off the bag, and you can see how much I'm cutting off. It's not much at all, but you can always cut off more if you need to. Where you begin is up to you. You can start in the center to let the icing flow out. You can also begin around the edges, especially if you have small areas to fill in, like scalloped edges, for example. Now, either one is okay, but keep your icing flow continuous. Don't work from one side and then jump to the other side of the cookie. This is what we call keeping the edges wet. If you start on the edge like I did and then skip to the center, the edge of this cookie will start to dry. So by the time the icing from the edge meets that center puddle, you won't have a smooth finish because the edge will have already started to dry. Before you start flooding a cookie, always check that you have enough icing in your bag to flood it entirely. If you have to stop and fill another bag, your icing edges will definitely start to dry. Now to be safe, if you're doing a lot of cookies, fill a couple bags to have on hand. Here's another important tip. Keep the tip down and as close to the surface as possible while you are flooding. This will prevent any air from getting trapped under the icing. And that trapped air creates sections that will look sunken and your surface will look very uneven. 
Now getting into the habit of keeping the tip down is an easy way to avoid that. An issue I hear a lot from beginners is their iced cookies look flat once they set. Thinned icing has quite a bit of water and once it dries that water will evaporate and won't look as full, so it could be that your icing is too thin. Here's another tip. Overfill your icing just a bit until it looks a little puffy. This is what we call pillowing. And this is why the outline is so useful. As I'm overfilling the cookie, watch how the outline acts like a dam. It holds that extra icing really well. Of course, if you squeeze too much icing, it will overflow. And as you practice and decorate more cookies, you'll start to get a better feel for when to stop. And if you're doing this for the first time, I would recommend baking extra cookies, but don't worry too much because your mistakes are all edible and delicious. Immediately after flooding a cookie, I like to make sure that the icing flows into all the corners and merges with the outline. I like to use the etching tool from our cookie decorating tool set, but you can also use a toothpick. However, the etching tool has a finer tip making it easier to pop air bubbles than a toothpick. I also like to lightly tap the cookie on the surface a couple times. This will further smooth out your surface and encourage any trapped air bubbles to come up. Just be sure not to tap too much or your icing could overflow the outline. You can leave the cookies as is, or you can use any wet on wet techniques that you want before drying. Here are some simple ones that you can do while your icing is still wet. You can use a different color, thin consistency icing and pipe dots or lines all over. And the colors and the designs will level with the icing, but it will still look defined. It's not going to bleed in. You can also take your etching tool and manipulate these dots and lines. You can drag them with the etching tool or the comb, or you can make random circular motions to create a marble design. Once your cookies are flooded, pick them up very carefully. Try not to tip them. Place them in a cool, dry place uncovered, and I wouldn't store them in a cabinet. They need enough circulation to air dry. Humidity is the enemy of royal icing, and it won't dry properly in humid conditions. If you can't avoid it, you can place your cookies in an oven with a light on or on the lowest heat setting to dry your cookies. Now if you do this, you'll actually get a shiny finish. Another way to dry and get a shiny finish is by drying your cookies in front of a fan. Just rotate them every hour or so for the first couple hours. Let your cookies dry, preferably overnight, but about eight hours should be enough. If you are using a lot of red or black icing color, just know that it might take your icing a little bit longer to dry. These cookies are the perfect canvas for holidays, theme parties, or personalized designs. Now once this dries thoroughly, you can pipe decorations on top, you can paint with lemon extract and icing color, you can add color dust or pearl dust, add brush embroidery, or you can even use the metallic cake paint set. We have tons of cookie decorating projects for all skill levels on Wilton.com, so make sure to check it out. If you have any cookie decorating questions, make sure to leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer. If you decorate cookies using the techniques you learned today, share your pictures with us by using hashtag Wilton Cakes or hashtag Bake Your World Happy. I love seeing your work. Thanks for watching.